What is up, my beautiful people? Today, we are going through the principles of web design and web development. So let's get to it. Okay, you guys. Web design and web development. Two distinct yet interconnected disciplines within the field of web design. So while the terms are often used interchangeably, it's important to understand the differences between them. Web design, it primarily focuses on the aesthetic aspect of a website's visual elements. Designers use various design programs, things like Adobe Creative Suite, Sketch, Figma, uh, to create the layouts, the typography, the color, the imagery, and the other components of the website. They also use things like um, uh, Wix and uh, Elementor and things like that that help give us the overall structure. But that is a different topic. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Things they consider are things like user experience and user interface, which is UX for user, inter uh, for user experience and UI for user interface. And this is what they're known for all over the website creating community and even in app creations and things like that. So UX, UI, very important. And what they do is they ensure that a website is visually appealing. It's easy to navigate and users use it effectively. Web designers are responsible for creating an attractive, cohesive visual experience that really aligns with the website's purpose and, well, their target audience. Here's the thing, usability, it plays a crucial role in web design. So designers strive to enhance the usability by carefully creating and arranging the information flow, uh, optimizing navigation menus, and truly just ensuring intuitive interactions. They may also consider accessibility guidelines, which they have to, by the way, uh, because all your website needs to be accessible, but they have to consider accessibility uh, guidelines to ensure that a website can be easily accessible to people with disabilities. When they do that, by the way, they make it easier on everybody, not just the people with disabilities. So keep that in mind as you go on creating your websites. The ultimate goal of web design is to create really this engaging and visually appear appealing interface that communicates effectively the website's content and encourages users to explore a little bit further. You want people to come into your store and to stay at your store and to shop at your store. And that is what a website is. It's your visual store. On the other hand, web development, it involves the technical implementation of a website design. It focuses on turning a design concept into functional websites. They use programming languages. These are things like HTML, like CSS and JavaScript. Web developers, they utilize coding skills and frameworks to build the website structure. They handle interactive elements and enable dynamic functionalities. So they both work on, or they both, yeah, they work on the front end side, side, which is the client side and the back end uh, server side aspect of website design or development. So here's, here's the, the, um, the concept that you need to take away from this. The, Coding aspect is kind of like the skeleton uh, or the, uh, what, what are they called? The mannequins, there you go. And the, that is the website development. And the website design is the dress that goes on the mannequin. So that's, that's that, okay? So front end developers, they're responsible for translating the visual design into HTML, CSS and JavaScript code that borrows uh, that browsers can render and interact with. They tend to ensure that a website is responsive, works across different devices and different screens, and provides a seamless user experience. And that's what you want to do. You just want to make the user experience very seamless to people who are using your website or anything that you created content. You want it to feel like it is the simplest thing. The the simpler it feels the better it will work with, uh, with your targeted audience. Whereas uh, the complexity is kind of hidden behind the simplicity. It's, it's in the genius, right? It's in the simple genius and that's what it is. I believe, uh, I believe Einstein says, if you can't explain it simply, 
you don't know it well enough. Simply, uh, so so it's very similar to something like that, except on a website. So that is that. While uh, on the other hand, you guys, website design and website development are distinct. They are very closely related and closely intertwined in the process of creating a website. And for most of us, if you're using things like Elementor, you'll be both of them. You'll be the designer and the developer. Um, so effective collaboration between web designers and web developers is absolutely and undoubtedly essential to ensure that the design is translated into fully functional websites that meet both the aesthetics and the technical requirements. Web development, uh, you guys, is um, a multifaceted discipline that really encompasses the techniques and aspects of website creating. It involves the use of various languages, as we've mentioned, HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and CSS, which is, stands for Cascading Chat Style Sheet, which you can tell that it is it involves a lot of styling, and uh, the JavaScript, and usually other scripting languages, but these are the main ones. So while website designers, they primarily focus on visual aesthetics and user experience of the website, web developers, they specialize in coding and programming to build those designs to life, right? To bring them, to, to, to birth them in a sense. And what they do is that they work behind the scenes. They usually use technical experts uh, or expertise to implement the features and functionalities required for a website to function properly. So again, with, with uh, if you're doing your website by yourself, you don't have much of this web development experience, there are things and there are tools that you can use that will make your life a lot easier, which will give you almost the uh, toolbox to be um, a web designer um, and have the development process already there. So it's kind of cool. All right, so, um, what does HTML do? Well, HTML serves as the backbone of web development. It provides the structure and the organization of content on a web page. It defines the elements and their relationships, things like headings and paragraphs and images, links and forms. So in the hierarchy of things, the headings go first and they have their own markup. Uh, the paragraphs are identified with a small p, and that's that's what they're known for in this HTML language. And that's how the when you get into SEO and things like that, that's how uh, websites like Google know what's on your site. Okay. On the other hand, there is CSS, and what it is, it, it's responsible for the presentation and the styling. It's in the name, like style sheet. Uh, so it's in the name. It controls the layout, the typography, the colors, the visual aspects, and it ensures consistency and coherence across the website. So CSS, it provides the ability to customize the appearance of elements. It also allows you to apply responsive design techniques for different styles and different devices and create a visually engaging interface. We're left with one of the major ones when that is the JavaScript. And JavaScript, you guys, is a powerful scripting language. It enables dynamic and interactive function functionalities on a web page. That's what makes it interactive, right? So web developers, what they do is they utilize JavaScript to create interactive elements and handle that user interactions. They can manipulate data um, and they can really provide a more engaging user experience. And all these three things, they work together to allow uh, the client um, to really feel that seamless experience, okay? Nothing is choppy, nothing is stopping and so forth. All right, so apart from these core technologies, there are other frameworks that and libraries that can be used, um, which we will not go into detail today, but there are things like uh, Vue.js, Angular, jQuery, uh, and so forth. All right. Principles of web designs. Um, they are essential guidelines that help create designers or that help designers create a visually appealing and user-friendly website. These principles, they take into account various factors, 
they can impact the aesthetic and the usability of the website. So let's, oh, sorry. Let's expand a little bit more on this principle of minimalism. We're gonna start there. Um, there's a few principles that we're gonna look into, but truthfully, minimalism is a pretty big up there, especially now. Minimalism says that less is more. And it really just focuses on the simplicity and the stripping away of unnecessary elements. It leaves the essential components to create a clear and uncluttered design. It's a, it's a really good place for a white space. It's relaxing. At the very least, with all the stress going on in the world, it's kind of good to have a moment of peace and it kind of uh, simplicity or minimalism works with websites, okay? So this approach, what it does, it, it really just emphasizes the use of white spaces. It also, this is the white space uh, usage is also called uh, negative space. And the idea is to provide a breathing room between elements and create a sense of balance and elegance. So by, empl uh, by employing minimalism, web designers, they can enhance the visual impact of their website. And by using this white space, they can draw attention to key elements such as text, images, or call to actions. And you want people to take your call to action, okay? If it's cluttered, if there's too many things around it, if people are not focused um, on it, uh, then they will not enjoy it and they will not see it and they will be distracted and they won't take your call to action. So keep that in mind. Also, minimalism, it contributes to the usability of the website. When a design is uncluttered and straightforward, users can navigate through the content more easily. They find what they're looking for quickly and complete their desired action without distraction. Think about it yourself. If you're using a website and too many things go on, within the six second, you are out of there, okay? But if it's easy to find, it's peaceful, you stay there longer. You find what you're looking for and you continue. So the simplicity of minimalism design provides uh, help or improves the user experience. And that is something that you want to do. Also, you guys, aesthetics. It improves aesthetics, usability, and it offers practical benefit for website performance. And I mentioned before, but eliminating unnecessary design elements, um, such as excessive images or complex animations or things like that, they allow a page to load faster, okay? Faster load time means people are more likely to actually stay on your site. If, the, if your site is taking forever to load, you're out of there, okay? People are out of there. You do that too. So keep that in mind. All right. Minimal design is not only enhances that, that, that it not only enhances the user experience, also it contributes to better engine search engine optimization. So think about that. As you're designing your website, I know this is what you're working on right now, but as you're designing your website, you have to keep SEO in mind. Cool, moving on to principles of web design part two, and that is the principle of typography. In web design, typography plays a crucial role in creating an engaging and impactful visual experience, okay? Typography, very important. It really gives a mood. It defines what people are looking at. And what it refers to is the style, the arrangement, and the appearance of the text, right? Typography refers to text on a website. It encompasses factors like uh, font size, uh, font selection, spacing, colors, hierarchy. And so all these things are very, very important in making sure that your website says the thing, things you want them to say, you want it to say, but also feels the way you want it to feel, which means that not on your end, but on the user end, does the, does the, um, uh, does the visitor, right, the user feel the way you want them to feel about your brand based on how it looks and how it sounds and, and how it's arranged and how and what is important in the hierarchy of things? That's the question you have to ask. It's not about how you're feeling. It's about the feelings and emotions that you're invoking in the other person, okay? So 
typography it, in modern design of website and modern website design, it goes beyond just conveying information. What it really does, it, it serves a powerful design element that sets the tone and theme of a website. Designers, they can carefully choose the font that aligns with the website's purpose, branding, and overall aesthetic. Branding is very important. I cannot stress that enough. If you look at any of the major brands out there, you'll see consistency in the fonts they use and the color they use, even if they're using white. It's the exact same shade of white across the board on their product, on their website, everywhere. And right, you'd think white doesn't have much of a uh, variation, but here we are. It's actually a very specific hex color. Okay, so that is within the typography, within the branding, within the overall aesthetics. And what it does, it really, you guys, typography, it can evoke emotions, it can enhance readability, and it can create a cohesive visual identity. When talking about contemporary web design, it often embraces bold and expressive typography to grab the user's attention and make a more memorable impression. This departure from traditional, more creative uh, typefaces allows the designers to be more creative and unique in their approach. You want vibrant and eye-catching fonts that can establish this strong visual hierarchy. You want it to guide users to focus on something very specific, on an important content or on an important call to action. And again, you want the people to take, to take that action that you're calling them to take. So it has to be focused on that. So apart from the aesthetics, typography, it also plays a crucial role in usability. You gotta think about it this way. Well-executed typography improves, uh, improves uh, legibility and readability. And that makes it easier for the users to consume and comprehend your website content. So factors such as font size, line spacing, and contrast between text and background are carefully considered to ensure optimal readability across various devices and screen sizes. Moreover, typography, moreover, I haven't used that word in ages, but moreover, moreover, you guys, moreover, typography aids in establishing this consistent uh, visual language through the website. So by employing cohesive set of fonts and uh, typographic styles, designers can create this harmonious and professional appearance. And that's, that's what you wanna do as a designer. Consistency in typography, it enhances the overall user experience by facilitating a familiar and ease of uh, navigation. The next principle, you guys, is the principle of color scheme. Woof colors. The world of colors is full of, well, colors. Sorry, that was supposed to be funny. I hope you laughed. Ha ha, ha ha. <laughs> Anyways, you guys. So the principles of color scheme in website design is really a fundamental aspect that significantly influences the overall experience and perception of a website. So the selection and implementation of color, it can evoke emotions, it can convey messages, and it can establish branding and enhance the visual appeal. Let's take a more in-depth look at colors. All right, there's lots about them. You guys have heard of the psychology of colors. Uh, you've probably know the impact it doesn't have on you. Uh, it has on you uh, uh, consciously or subconsciously. You gravitate toward more uh, towards different colors for different occasions. So, what does color do? Color combinations can have a profound impact on how users think, feel, and interact with the website, and life in general, truthfully. In the past, my friends, website design tended to often lean towards soft and muted colors, shapes. What they wanted to do at that point is aim towards subtle and calming aesthetics. There we go. But in um, more modern web design, you're looking at more vibrant colors. You're looking at dynamic or dramatic colors that have uh, truthfully just gained popularity. And the idea is to capture users' attention more effectively. So bold, choice, uh, bold, bold color choice can create a visually striking impression. They can create and evoke emotions and communicate a sense of energy or excitement. 
Okay, so talked about the color combination. The other thing about color is you've seen it gradient colors, which means that it kind of fades into another color. And they've become a bit more prevalent in con contemporary web design. They offer a versatile and dynamic approach to color usage, and they allow designers to add depth and dimension and visual interest to their website. So Gradient provides a fresher and more engaging look. Uh, it enhances the overall aesthetics and makes the design feel more modern and current. So when selecting a color scheme, what website designers use is they consider multiple factors. These are things like um, website purpose. They look at the, so why is the website being created? What's the point of it? Uh, they look at the audience. Who's going to be looking at this? Is it uh, little teenagers or young teenagers? Or is it um, elderly? Okay. Or is it somewhere in between? I don't know. Okay. Or is there a certain groups? Is it moms that's going to be looking at this website? Is it um, construction workers? Again, target audience makes or plays a huge role in the colors that are used. Just simply look at the different brands that are out there that you already know and think of the colors they're using to convey um, their message and to speak to their audience, right? If you look again at Home Depot, there's these bold orange and these bold colors and they speak to a certain demographic. They kind of highlight this strength. You look at their typography, you look at their colors, it's like, woof, it's very strong. Whereas if you have brands that are about babies or for uh, moms that just gave birth, they're all very calm colors, simple colors, loving, right? Very smooth in, in their color schemes and in their typography. And that really speaks to the audience that they're trying to do. And very importantly, to the brand guidelines that they've created. And the whole concept is that they aim to create this harmonious and cohesive visual experience that aligns with the website's goal and resonate with its intended users. I'm going to say that one again. It has to resonate with the intended user. So the color schemes of a website, what they do is they can contribute or their function is to contribute. Their job is to contribute to building a brand, brand identity and recognition. So that really, um, anytime a color is seen, right? within a certain context, it reminds that person of this brand. So consistency in color usages um, across different pages of elements really enforces or reinforces the brand's visual presence. And the point is to help associate specific colors with the brand. Also, designers, what they do is utilize color psychology principles, which we talked about a little bit earlier, we touched on a little bit earlier, to evoke specific emotions to create a certain atmosphere. For example, warm colors like red and orange, they can evoke a feeling of excitement or of urgency. Cooler colors or cooler tones like blues and greens, they truly convey a sense of calmness or trustworthiness. For somehow when there's a color blue, you're like, ah, this is trustworthy and that is um, that is a pretty cool thing to know. So you know the psychology of colors, you know which colors you should be choosing for your site. All right, principle number four, principle number four. All right, that is display, okay? The principle of display in web design, it focuses on how content is presented and organized on a website. It encompasses the layout, the structure, and the navigation. The point of it is to create a seamless, again, and intuitive browsing experience for the user. Everything we're doing is centered on the user in terms of design, okay? So one approach to enhancing the display of a website is by adopting a borderless user interface. What is a borderless user interface, you may ask? Glad you're asking these questions. So a borderless user interface, or UI, again, removes unnecessary visual clutters. Uh, these are things like prominent borders around elements. And what they do is they create a more seamless and immersive experience, as if that block is no longer just like a, a square in the middle or a rectangle in the middle of a page. It is part of this page. It creates it, that the mind doesn't have to divide the two. Okay. So it makes it easier. 
So by eliminating borders, the content seamlessly blends together. It allows the user to focus on the information that is presented rather than being distracted by the design element. Because the point is to present your information in a way that makes it more successful, okay? In a way that people can reach it. So the less clutter there is, the simpler it is, the more likely that people are going to engage with it. So this approach, it creates a sense of continuity and fluidity as users navigate through the website. And that is something awesome. Okay, another aspect of display is that it can contribute to a more engaging user experience uh, in like, for example, the one page website designs. So in that concept of display, rather than dividing the content across multiple pages, which you've probably seen before, by the way, you've seen where you've had to navigate from different page one to page two to page three, there's also the concept of the one page uh, design where everything is on one page um, and it's all presented there and all the information is um, often like a story format and it goes one, two, three, four as you scroll down. Um, usually there's a menu on top, you click um, and there's an anchor. So it takes you specifically to that place on the page, but it's still all in one page. So what this does, it, it simplifies the navigation and allows users to scroll through the content in a linear fashion. And that is to create a cohesive and uninterrupted browsing experience. So users can easily access different sections of the website without the needing to switch uh, or without the need to switch between pages. And so that also, it enhances the flow and accessibility of the content and it focuses on display, which is the principle that we have. Next up, my friends, next up is animation. All right. Oh, my one second, my people. There we are. So the principle of animation in web design, you guys, focuses on adding dynamic and interactive elements to enhance the user experience. Animation, when really used thoughtfully and purposefully, again, very important words, thoughtfully and purposefully, it has to be both. It can engage the user rather than distract them. It can have like a sense of delight and it can provide visual cues to guide their interactions. One way uh, to really utilize animation is, uh, is through the use of anima animated icons. So these animated icons are small graphical elements and they, moved, they move or transform in response to a user action or as part of the website design. These dynamic icons can draw attention to important features. They can provide feedback on user interactions or just simply add this little touch of joie de vie or like this little uh, touch of liveliness to the overall design. So by using animated icons, designers can enhance the visual appeal and interactivity of websites. And that makes it a bit more engaging and enjoyable for the users. Another thing is micro interactions. And micro interactions are little elements that can benefit from animations. So micro interactions, they refer to subtle animations that occur in response to a specific action, like clicking a button, like hovering over an element or hovering or scrolling through a content. It makes it like this a little bit more, uh, it gives it a little bit more bounce or a little bit more lively so that you feel that the website is interactive rather than it being bland or boring. So. These little animations, they can provide this sense of responsiveness and they make sure that the experience and is fluid and interactive and intuitive. Um, and a good example of that would probably be a button that changes color or shape when clicks on, or a card that expands to reveal additional information when hovered over. Um, these are known as micro, uh, micro interactions and they are pretty, uh, pretty solid and pretty cool. All right, next up is our mobile friendliness. 
Mobile friendliness is a website or web design emphasizes, or in web design, it really emphasizes the ensuring that a website is accessible and provides a seamless experience or seamless browning experience across various devices. So that includes your iPhone, your tablet, your Android, or whatever desktop computer, computer whatever device you're using, it has a mobile friendly version. Uh, you also find these, by the way, on uh, things like the Apple Watch and smartwatches. Uh, in general, you find apps that you use on your phone. It's also accessible on, on these other devices. But for now, let's stick to mobile friendliness in terms of website design, and that would be that it works perfectly fine and seamlessly across all different devices without becoming, uh, without leaving elements behind and so forth. So when designing a website with mobile friendliness in mind, several considerations could come into play. First and foremost, the website's layout and design should be responsive, which means that it dynamically adjusts and optimizes its appearance and functionality based on screen size and orientation of the device. You notice that if you're grabbing your phone horizontally and then you move it vertically, the, the layout of the page changes, okay? That has to do with mobile friendliness. It talks about layout and design. Both have to be responsive. Now, again, if you're making your website yourself and you're using things like Elementor or Wix or um, WordPress and things like that, most often that more often than not, they already have that built in, which is great uh, to do. So designing for mobile friendliness, it involves optimizing the website's load speed. Uh, so mobile users have a limited bandwidth and strong, uh, slower internet connections compared to a desktop user. So it's essential to minimize unnecessary elements. It's essential to compress images and it's essential to optimize code to ensure quicker loading time. What that means is when you're designing your website for mobile friendliness, there are elements where you can keep on the desktop that you don't have to keep on your mobile friendly uh, site. So um, even the images, they could be smaller, uh, they could be compressed. There are tons of things that you can do to make it a little bit easier. Okay. So more uh, mobile friendly sites or uh, web design, it involves uh, user interactions for touch screen. Okay, so you have to make it easy for people to, using a touch screen to uh, click on these sites, okay? So for example, using larger and uh, more easily tappable buttons uh, and providing ample space between the interactive elements, and considering the ergodynamics or ergonomics of mobile device usages. Again, leave a space between the uh, elements so that people who are clicking the button and they're interactive are not going to the wrong page because that's going to get really frustrating really easily. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to allow it uh, to do that. All right. Our last one that we're going to look at today is user focus. So principles of web development guideline, the process of creating functional and user-friendly websites. We've talked about it throughout um, our conversation today, but this is, it merits its own uh, section. So these principles, they ensure that developers prioritize the need of the user and focuses on delivering a seamless browsing experience. It is not about you. It is about how your client is going to feel when they are on your website. Is it easy to interact with? Is it frustrating? Do they want to leave? Can they find things? So user focus is a fundamental principle in web design. And it really, really, you guys, emphasizes placing the need and the expectation of the user at the forefront. Developers in this case, they play a crucial role in ensuring that the website is accessible, it's functional and intuitive for users to navigate. And really by understanding the behaviors, the preferences, the accessibility requirements, developers can create a website that caters to a diverse range of users. Again, you have to speak to your audience. You also have to make sure that it is accessible. So accessibility, that's a non-negotiable. 
but behaviors and preferences, the more you know of your audience, the, know you, the more you know who your target market is, the more you can fix your website to fit that, okay? So one aspect uh, of user experience or, sorry, of uh, user focus in web development is really establishing and enforcing coding standards. And really, um, this involves following the best practices in the industry when writing code. And again, if you're creating your own website, you're not a web developer, you are not, um, uh, you're not writing code, this may not pertain to you, but uh, for the sake of knowledge, you have to use, if you're writing code, you have to make sure that it's consistent, uh, it's readable, and it's maintainable. And that means that if someone else was to pick up your code three years down the line, it is very well structured. It's easy to understand. It's easy to bug, uh, to debug. It's easy to maintain uh, because you've organized it well. All right. So that helps with the user uh, focus. And it is a wonderful thing, again, to, uh, uh, to do. So that is it, my friend, for today. And I will be with you in the next one. Uh, again, this is Rita Sekali, and I will see you in the next one.